Hello everybody. Any day you drive a Ferrari, in my book, is a good one. But not every Ferrari is actually a great car. Contrary to popular belief, they've made quite a few howlers in their time. However, there is absolutely no doubt that they have also made some truly brilliant cars. And today I'm driving something that might be one of those. This is a 2005 F430. Blessed, I am happy to say, with a manual gearbox. Now the F430 currently sits in a bit of an odd place in the Ferrari lineup. It's not really a classic yet, but the 458 is such a leap on in terms of performance that it makes this thing look a little bit slow. So why would you buy a 430? You see, with the values of older Ferraris going up, these aren't really a bargain anymore. Okay, a 458 is still quite a bit more money, but it sits in a very weird place. Five or six years ago, you could pick one of these up for about 70 grand, and at the time, they would have been pretty good value for money. The prices of these were always destined to be high because they have a place in Ferrari history as the final mid-engined V8 Ferrari available with this beautiful manual gearbox. Now I've never driven a 430 previously and I'd heard a few stories about the gearbox not being quite as nice to use as that and its forebears. Well I'm happy to report that that is categorically untrue. This is a delicious gearbox. Now, for whatever reason, the box doesn't make all the same metallic noises as previous Ferraris that I've driven, but it is absolutely gorgeous to use. In comparison to the 355, which is the Ferrari I've got the most experience in, it's a much quicker gearbox. You can row the gears a hell of a lot faster than that. In the 355, you have to be very deliberate indeed. In this, not so much. One thing this car is also blessed with that the 355 certainly isn't is some torque. You see, for quite a long time, Ferrari seemed to alternate chassis and engine improvements. So the 355 is basically a 348 chassis, but with a much different engine. The 360 is then near enough the 355's engine, but with a totally different chassis, and so on and so forth. So this car is essentially the 360's chassis but with a completely new engine, a 4.3 litre. At lower RPM, I don't think it's the most sonorous car. It does sound a little bit like a wet fart to my ears, but the moment you get past about 2,500 RPM, it sounds like a Ferrari. That flywheel is ultra light and makes changing gear an utter joy. Healing and towing is an absolute pleasure. The steering in this is interesting too. If you've never driven a Ferrari, you might think it was a little unusual or perhaps even broken, but it's not. It's light, but it has plenty of feeling through it. There's lots and lots of texture through this wheel. Crucially also, this car is sized really nicely. It's a good bit bigger than some of those older classic Ferraris, but with those beautiful haunches out the front, I can place it in the road really well. You're also treated to a great view out the side of those air scoops sitting prominently on the rear haunches, and that does remind you you are in something properly special. In the greatest Ferrari traditions, the interior lets it down somewhat with some sticky sort of weird switches that are classic Ferrari thing and a lot of the switch gear in here I actually do recognize from the 355. I'm pretty sure the indicator stalks are exactly the same. These buttons down here are definitely the same style and they even predate the 355 I'm sure and the wing mirror controls are the exact same as the 355 which is the exact same as the old Audi RS2 that I drove. So some of the parts on here are um, pretty old. Pretty old indeed. Now if you're in the mood to want to actually try and daily drive a Ferrari, this is probably not a bad one to do it in, even in manual form. Perfectly easy to drive around town, perfectly nice, makes a lovely sound, and of course in the Spider, the roof comes down, which means when you get blessed with a nice day like today, you can enjoy it a bit. That light steering also means that maneuvers around town are not a chore at all. And the gearbox is so pleasant to use, I am changing, I will admit, quite unnecessarily an awful lot of time.
perhaps the most important thing about the 430, if you're considering it as maybe your first Ferrari, is that it's sort of less likely to disappoint than the others. You see, the classic Ferraris, and I'm talking realistically anything 360 and earlier, well, they, they can be hard work. They, they can be really, really hard work. Um, they are, well, now not cheap to buy. They are definitely not cheap to run, and general rule is the older your Ferrari gets, the more expensive it's going to be to run. Whereas with the 430, okay, they're a little more expensive to buy now. Uh, unusually, when this car's owner bought it, the manual was actually the cheaper option. Uh, these days, that situation has reversed, and I can't see it going back the other way anytime soon. But the 430 is a world apart from those older cars in terms of build quality, servicing costs, all that kind of stuff. Ferrari do put real effort into making sure that their cars can be used and driven. This car spends a lot of its time being parked up and in storage, as do many cars. And it's given me no warning lights, no errors, no issues, nothing. It's being impeccably well behaved. I haven't even had a single hiccup from the engine, nothing. Now, I do apologize for the fact that I haven't got any super interesting roads yet. That is because I'm basically sort of playing peekaboo and trying to find one uh, in an area that I don't know at all. Throttle response is absolutely perfect as you'd expect it to be. The clutch is definitely on the heavy side. Uh, the brake pedal is rather sensitive, but also very firm. So once you get used to it, you get that initial shock of kind of leaning on it and it, it really does stop you. Uh, actually, it's uh, very nice to use indeed. The thing isn't even rattling or anything like that, which is something that classic Ferraris definitely do. The old 355 in particular, the old Target Top, oh, it's just a rattle machine. This thing actually feels proper and solid. And that's something to consider because I suppose for a lot of people, they may be uh, upgrading to this from something perhaps like a, a 911 or heaven forbid, a 911 Turbo. And so you really don't want your first Ferrari to disappoint. This one won't. It's just so easy to drive, so delightful. You can steer it with your fingertips if you want. It is a proper Ferrari. And if I had the money, I would definitely, definitely have one. When I bought my Lotus Evora, I was really considering one of these. I was looking at it, and I was thinking, oh, do I, don't I, do I, don't I? In my head, I managed to convince myself that there was no way in reality that actually the 430 could really be a, a better car. You know, I, I did the maths. I said, actually, you know what? Yeah, it's more power and all that, and a bit more torque. But, oh, it's more weight. Oh, look at the power to weight ratios. You, you do, you know, oh, it, it, it can't really feel or be that much better, can it? I was wrong. This is brilliant. Properly, properly brilliant. If you're looking for your first Ferrari, get one of these. Really do. I've only been able to sample the, the tiniest bit of it, but let's be honest here. Many people buy these as essentially a poser's car let's be completely honest about that it is for many people a poser's car but it just does what i want it to a ferrari in my mind is okay this is this is me and ferraris right the priority list for a ferrari is does it look good does it sound good that's it that that is it in that order okay everything else is a bonus and this car looks good sounds great and goes really well i'm actually probably impressed with it however this is not the most special car that i'm going to drive today by some margin we are almost at an end of my celebratory month of specials here on the channel this week is ultimate car week and i am pleased to say that for our final installment I have been lucky I have been extremely lucky and we have managed to pull something pretty spectacular out of the bag for now I'm just gonna keep enjoying this thing thanks for watching everyone please like comment below subscribe if you haven't already 
and I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.